Yeah. We want it on tape. Yeah. Senior, what's the difference uh, actually between a canon and the Monsignor in, in, in the estimate of the Vatican? They, they are all just stages of honor. Okay. Yes. Monsignor, like you're looking at one, he's a personal prelate to the Pope. Uh -huh. And did you, did you know, I bet you didn't, and you laugh at this. The Pope that appointed me was Pope, Pi, Pope Paul the Oh, Sixth. I know about that. I called you father for a few weeks. Did you? I sure did. No, but uh, yeah. you were right. Oh, yeah, you yeah. knew. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I was a, prelate, a domestic prelate to Pope Paul the Sixth. But when Paul died, I, was, I wasn't a domestic prelate. I was priest. Yeah. And before he died, I was Monsignor. And when he died, I was father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I this made a point. <laughs> yeah, this character knew that. Yeah. But the next pope, as soon as he is elected, he issues an edict or yeah. something, whatever you call and it. And he becomes Monsignor again. Telling all the, the Monsignors that the last pope had, <clears throat> now you're all mine. Yeah. And I'm Monsignor again. I've been father five times. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I was, I, I was appointed five different popes. Uh -huh. But in between, in the interregnum, when there was no pope, I was father. Uh -huh. But that's not what I came to. Why did they ask you to go to Ireland this time? I didn't hear you. Why did they ask him to go to Ireland this time? Well, he, had, he was, that was his usual time. He was there. Oh, yeah. He happened to be there. Fly For, the correct. Oh. And he's from Dungannon, so he was yeah. right at the centre of it. Yeah. Well, uh, they sent a message to me would I be Monsignor. their honoured guest on the 5th of September, but that was their big affair. And here's the thing now, and you're all going to laugh at this. The Catholics and the Protestants got together and put on the celebration together. And of course, historically, as his names here were probably referred to many times, the flight of the Irish was a great victory for the British, and that was the end of Irish rule. But it was a terrible disaster for the Irish, because it was the beginning of British rule, you know, British absolute rule, you see. But anyhow, they got together. And uh, I wasn't a bit interested in uh, talking to that kind of a crowd, you know, because that side there, they were all celebrating victory and that side was celebrating defeat. So I said, but my family, they said I, I should do it because they wanted to keep everybody happy and pleased and all that. So I went there. They were very, very nice now, I'll have to say this. And if you look at uh, some pictures that, in that picture there, there was a whole gang of them that dressed up in period dress. There's a guy there with a, with a sword and there were pike men and everything, and they were all in Irish dress. Well, I would say that that crowd were Catholic, you know. Yeah. The other side, but they were all very courteous. And here's the big, the big surprise of all. The mayor of Dungannon, which is not a Catholic town, the mayor of Dungannon is a Sinn Féinor. Mm. What do you think of that? <laughs> He's in that picture there mm -hmm. with, the, with the cords and mm -hmm. all around him, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, anyhow... I thought it was a bandolero. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyhow, you have already had a celebration when you talked about mm -hmm. it. Uh -huh. But this, they're celebrating and there will be many more uh, celebrations in Ireland because this is exactly the 400th anniversary of the Flight of the Earls. Yeah. Now, do you know who the Earls were that they're talking about? Mm -hmm. There was Hugh, Hugh O'Neill, was probably the top man, and then there was O'Donnell, the O'Donnell, and there was the Maguire, and I think the, the McSweeney, was he there? Well, probably. anyhow, there was a lot of sub, uh, you know, principles and all that sort of thing. The big shots for the three uh, heirs, you know, of Tyrone and Donegal, Tyrconn, and, uh, and Maguire of Fermanagh. And, uh, I think it was MacLeisig or somebody, in writing about it. He said there never was in history a ship that left in the conditions in which that ship left carrying so much nobility. Some words to that effect, mm -hmm. you know, you read mm -hmm. that. You That's know. true. So they fled. Uh, I don't know exactly where... Uh, O'Donnell, I think, went to Spain mostly. We've got a, big, we've got a beautiful picture back there. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. yeah, that there. That's the, the route that yeah. the, that mm -hmm. the little ship followed. Yeah. You see that red line on mm -hmm. that? Yeah. The red line on that. They headed behind for... you, that picture. Yep. Uh-huh. 
That. Right here. Right no, yeah, bring that. It, bring it up here. The bottom one. This one? Yes. That's it. They went to Spain but didn't land. This what? It was a, a Catholic wind. No, they, they, they a were Catholic going. wind. <laughs> yeah. Oops. yeah. Oops, sorry. I'll be the, the picture bearer. Well, they, they left Los Willy in... Uh, where the heck did they start? Yeah, right up here, do you see? Where my finger is. Yeah. Los Willy is just uh, outside the, the uh, Tyrone Peninsula, the Finnish own peninsula. It's Loch Foyle is the entrance into Derry, and Loch Swilly is uh, just the next big inlet. That's for the ship, and very private and very hard to negotiate, you know. Well, anyhow, they left there, and they headed... Spain. Here we are. They headed uh, for Spain, and I don't know, but Pat probably knows why they did. They were almost on the coast storm, of Spain. Wind. It was a big storm, and they were blown back. And here they went away back and into the Irish Channel, you know, between Britain and uh, France, and in here, and then up by Belgium and on down to Germany and all that. And the O'Neill landed in Rome, above all places. And there he was given a, a, an apartment for a little, a little place anyhow, by the Pope, and a pension as long as he lived. And he had the most splendid funeral, I think, of any chief of anybody. He was carried from the place where he died from his apartment on the shoulders of 12 Irishmen. And they came to the bridge across the Tiber and Castel Gandolfo is right there, and the Pope was in Castel Gandolfo. He came out, and the, the cortege stopped below, and he gave the absolution from up there. Then the Irishman proceeded over the Tiber and out to San Pietro in Aventino, and he was buried there. Now, I went there to his tomb, and there was a, a plaque in the wall the big wide walls and everything, they often built in the little tombs and things right into the wall of the church as they were going on. So there's a plaque there, but there's another one in the ground right there. And Cardinal Luffy told me that it was definitely in the, underneath the ground that he was buried. But that, those are the heirs then. The three great heirs, the O'Neill and the O'Donnell and the the uh, McGuire, mm -hmm. from one of those with the three big shots. Mm -hmm. There must have been quite a lot because mm -hmm. the, there was a great deal, a great oh. many people on board that little ship. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, that was the, the whole score. And the anniversary is this year, 400 years ago, that took place. Mm -hmm. The flight of the Earth, 400 years ago. And they are celebrating it, especially in the north. And in order to mark the occasion, they have, have you know, O'Neill's castle was in the north, in Dungannon, and it was on a, quite a big hill, a big prominence, you could see all over the place. But there's nothing there left except the foundations and things like that. But the, uh, the, the Protestant population, they roped it off, and it was forbidden for anybody to go in there, and they had a police barracks right beside it to oversee that nobody went in there. Well, O'Neill went out to Dungan and, and I went into the place, you see. In no time flat, there was a policeman at my side. And uh, I, he asked me a few questions. So I told him I was O'Neill and that the O'Neills were lived here at one time and all. He knew damn all about it. He was an Englishman, but he couldn't care less. So uh, he was very nice. And he said, would you like to go through the whole place? I said, yeah, I had been there before, but many, many years ago. So he went back into the police barracks to get permission to take me around everywhere, which he did. Yeah. I mean, they were very nice, but they were the other, the other kind, as they say in Ireland, you know. Mm. Well, anyhow, I wanted to tell you, well, it has nothing to do with the... <laughs> so did he die in the summer, or did the boat go out there just for that? Well, I wasn't there, so I don't know whether he did it for others or not, but he did it for you. But I mean, did the Pope travel? I mean, did O'Neill, did he die in the summer when the Pope was there, or did the Pope go out just to do Oh, no, no, O'Neill died in Rome. He died in Rome. 
and the Pope, of course, was in Rome. And Castel Dandolfo was the Pope's place of residence at that time. Oh, so, I thought he just went there in the summer. No, no, no. He used to live there. Oh. O'Neill was it? O'Neill lived in Rome. Not O'Neill, the Pope. I'm trying to figure out if the Pope traveled to the absolution or oh, no. if they went to the Pope. No, the Pope came out on the balcony yeah, yeah, of his yeah, own yeah. residence, Castel Dandolfo, and he blessed the cortege and all that, and they all stood there. There were thousands upon thousands of people, you know. What year are we talking about, Father? 400 years ago, exactly. 1607. What is that, 16... That's oh. when they sailed. Oh, you know, seven, they yeah. Sailed. I have a question. Why, why were they leaving? Well, I have a question. If, it's such, if it was such a disaster, why celebrate? Well, the Protestants celebrated because it was a disaster for us, but not for them. 